Now we have to get to the business then of uh, seeing how to interpret the printouts that you would get when you run a Proton NMR. Uh, when you get the printout, uh, it's going to give you a uh, whole bunch of peaks, and they're going to be on a scale like this. From 0 to about 12. And notice that the numbers are increasing to the left-hand side here. 0 to about 12 uh, is the range for Proton uh, NMR. All right, and now we have to talk about a bunch of different ways to label uh, this uh, series over here. Um, now, one thing to actually say is, uh, and then what you'll see is you'll see a bunch of peaks. And each of the peaks on your printout represents an absorption. Each of these peaks indicates um, uh, a place where the magnetic field was absorbed. Remember, another name for absorption is a resonance. So here we've shown three absorptions or three resonances. By the way, that's why the printout you showed me can't be proton NMR, because it's not on a scale of 0 to 12. Uh, it's in the hundreds and thousands, if you look at the scales there. So NMR one good way. 0 to 12? Pardon? NMR is only proton 12. NMR is always from 0 to 12. That's right. Proton M NMR is always from 0 to 12. Um, infrared is in the thousands. You can see that it's around 1,000s, 2,000s, and 3,000s for the most part. So that's one way to tell the difference uh, between the printouts. Okay, so we'll stick with the proton NMR. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to interpret uh, the scale here. Um, let's see. First of all, uh, these numbers here, so this number over here, I guess, would be, uh, say, about 10, and this number would be about 5. These numbers here are called the deltas, or the chemical shifts. These are the chemical shifts. The numbers between 0 and 12? That's right. And that is basically your position on the horizontal axis. Your position on the horizontal axis, the symbol for that is delta. That's your chemical shift. Uh, and the units for that is ppm, parts per million. We're not even going to get into today why that's a reasonable name. Uh, for the most part, we just say the units for the chemical shift are ppm, parts per million. Did the 5, is it there just because that's where it is on the scale, or is that? I'm just putting this in as a uh, typical number. So okay. here would be 4, 3. Normally, you have all the numbers. All right. I just want to say that these numbers are called the deltas, or the chemical shifts, and they're in parts per million, ppm. Uh, there's another way to interpret this, however. Remember that this peak occurred at one magnetic field. This peak occurred, um, absorption occurred when the magnetic field was different, and this occurred when it was different. Now, the magnetic field is actually increasing to the right. So this absorption occurred when we had set a high magnetic field. These radio waves were absorbed when we had set a medium magnetic field, and this absorption occurred when we had uh, a low magnetic field. Remember, what we basically do is we start the radio waves going, and then we start with a very low magnetic field, and we smoothly increase it. And every time there's an absorption, the computer records that. And we go over the whole range of applicable magnetic fields and see how many absorptions we get. All right, so some important terminology then. This end here would be called upfield. And this would be called downfield. Upfield and downfield, and that's referring to the magnetic field. Upfield is the right hand side where the absorptions occurred with a high magnetic field, and downfield is the left hand side where the absorptions occurred with a low magnetic field. Notice that the chemical shift scale is um, inverse to the magnetic field level. A big chemical shift indicates low magnetic field. Uh, and downfield, and a small chemical shift indicates high magnetic field and upfield. Okay. Um, why is zero big magnetic field? Remember, uh, it, it's not. Uh, zero is, uh, so the zero here doesn't represent the magnetic field, it represents the chemical shift, which is just a different scale or a different type of units. So we're not actually going to be writing down how big the magnetic fields are here. So I'm not saying the magnetic field here is 12. I'm just saying one way to label, so there's, uh, there's just two different ways to interpret the horizontal axis. One way to interpret the horizontal axis is that the further you are to the right, the higher the magnetic field was that gave you that absorption. Um, and another way to interpret it is simply um, to uh, uh, 
label it with these chemical shifts, which are increasing from right to left. Yeah, but I mean, like, why did they do it in the opposite way? Oh. Um, let's see. I think that's just uh, for uh, conventional reasons. Um, there, there's another way to interpret this, which is that, um, I don't know if we want to get, get into that too much. Um, okay. If it's not important, then it doesn't matter. For one thing, we always put in kind of a, um, a reference compound, so we can compare the peaks to the reference compound. Usually we put in TMS, and TMS absorbs at very high field. So usually, you're going to have a peak over here. This is the TMS. This is not your sample. This is just the reference compound that you threw in there um, so that you could have a, a standard for comparison. Um, and almost all, almost all the other compounds you'll see always absorb at lower magnetic fields. So since our reference is absorbing at a very high magnetic field, it's useful to call that reference zero. Okay. There's, there's some other reasons why it's useful to go from right to left here. But one reason is our reference is at a very high magnetic field, and it's useful to have your reference called a zero chemical shift. And then everything else is a chemical shift compared to that. OK. Uh, by the way, though, that's an important thing for interpreting these spectra. You should never pay any attention to this peak right way, oh, way over here at zero, because this is just the TMS. That's not the sample that you're trying to figure out. So when you get your printout, there will always be a little peak over here on the right for the TMS reference. That's not the sample that you're trying to interpret. OK. So um, chemical shifts increase to the left. Um, but magnetic field is increasing to the right over here. So what the, like, is high magnetic field better or worse or does it just not matter? It's just to like figure out the structure. Yeah, so I guess better, um, good and bad wouldn't really be applicable here. All we're doing is we want to, we simply want to measure which absorptions, we simply want to uh, take a look at which absorptions occurred at which fields. So but if, I'm saying like if the, if the things absorb at higher magnetic fields, does that mean they are capable of doing something better or like more than just the other means they're different compounds? just a clue for what their environment is so things that absorb at high field are in a different environment through we'll, we'll keep decoding how do I figure out those clues okay all right